This AI model is the new DeepSeek killer. Google's Gemini 2.0 flash thinking model is currently ranked number one on elmarina.ai with over 2.6 million votes across all these models, beating DeepSeek R1 and V3. Well, you might be asking, well, why is this good? Well, what's the cost? Well, the cost is nothing. It's zero dollars and it's best for multimodal understanding. It's great at reasoning and coding. And I have three reasons to use this. One, the total input token length is one million. Then I mention that it's free and it handles text and image recognition very well and it's so good at reasoning. And today we're gonna to write code that's gonna send text and image to the Gemini model. It's gonna write that into a text file locally and then upload that to Google Drive. This means the first step that we need to do is create an account on Google Studio. Let's go ahead and do that now. I'll give you this link in the description, but it's ai.google.dev slash AI Studio, or you can just Google search Google Studio, probably the first link. Then you're gonna go ahead and sign in so, so once you've signed in, in the middle here, there is a sign into Google, Google AI Studio. Just click that. You don't actually have to sign in again. Now on the right-hand side over here, I have this highlighted or opened up. Just make sure you're selected Gemini 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental. That is the free one. Okay, so make sure that is selected because that's what we're going to use today. Now I'm going to ask, I'm just going to choose a prompt just so you can see it in action. What is bigger, 9.9 .9 or 9.11? So it's going through the reasoning here and the answer 9.9 .9 is bigger than 9.11. I'm really happy that it actually got that right because I know past models have not gotten that right. So it just kind of goes us through, through its reasoning and why that was the case. Now let's choose another one. This is math worksheets. So this is generate a collection of elementary math worksheet for addition and subtraction of two digits. So this should be giving us actual math worksheets and it is. Right, so this is worksheet one, two digit addition. Here is another two digit addition. Um, subtraction and so forth, right? So pretty cool, right? It, it generated this, it's still generating actually. It's pretty quick and um, it's giving us the answers as well. So that's pretty cool. So what we've done so far is we created an account on Google Studio and we built an example with their prompt. Okay, so the next thing is we wanna get the code and run an example in Cursor. So let's go ahead and get the code and how you do that is on the right-hand side here above the model, there is a get code button, click that and it's gonna come up with this right here. Okay, so it's gonna have a, with this specific prompt, so I chose this prompt because I wanna show you it in action, and also when we upload to Google Docs. So with this specific prompt, uh, you can start the chat and starting the chat with, uh, with the prompt that we had in mind already, right? And then we can also send it another message as well. So let's go ahead and copy this. Right now I am in Cursor. I have a main.py function that is empty. So I'm just gonna paste that code Let's just go over it really quick. Is first off, uh, there will be a couple imports that I will show you how to do, but we need a Gemini API key, which we will get in just a minute. This is the configuration for the model. We instantiate the generative model class, the model name, just ensure that this is the flash thinking. You know, it should be already right when you copy the code. Now, there are a couple ways you can send a message or have a chat is you can say model.startchat and give it a history of the chat. And then you can take that, uh, take that and then send another message to it. Or you can just directly send a message to the model, which we'll do whenever we go to upload documentation to Google Drive. Okay, so what I'm gonna add here is this is the next message I wanna send. It did addition and subtraction. Can you also do this for multiplication and division? Okay, now the last thing we need to do to make this work is we need to get our API key. Let's get that now. When we come back here, and at the top left, there is a button that says get API key. And for some reason you don't, you don't see that, you can also go to settings, account settings, API plan information, and there's a get API key button right here. So I'm gonna click this API key. I'm going to create an API key. I'm going to search through Google Cloud Projects. I think it, can, it will have one here for you if you haven't done this already. You're just gonna click create API key in existing project. So now it's gonna generate the API key. We're just gonna copy that. Now I never condone not putting it somewhere safe like a .env file and then make sure that you have a git ignore. But for the purposes of this, I am just simply going to paste this in here and it's gonna be gone by the time you see this anyways. Okay, now next thing we need to do is just test this out because I think this is it. So then we're just gonna print the text of that response. So let me move up my terminal. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So Python main.py. Okay, and again, make sure that you're always saving your files whenever you do this. 
If in cursor, there will be a little white circle if you've made changes to the file, but you haven't saved it because if you don't save it and it runs and you're wondering why it's doing the same error or is giving you the same output because you didn't save the file. So just a little bit of advice, make sure that you save the file. All right, and it finished. Um, so now it's doing, it's doing multiplication. There's some division. Um, it looks like, oh, it has like, rem yeah, for the remainders. It actually has word problems and a lot of stuff, right? So it gave us a lot to do here. And that's, that's great. Okay. And it did that based on the previous chat history that we had. So it knew what to do. Okay. Now what we're going to do is what we've done is we got the code. We ran an example in cursor, but now let's add an image file and test image recognition. There are a couple ways that we can do this, but this is the way that I'm going to recommend for you is go back to Google studio, go to create a prompt. I, what I have here is an image of a croissant. And what I'm asking to do is to give me five different recipes for this food item. So I'm going to run this. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. I don't know why that took a minute to run, but now it's thinking it's going to recognize what this is. It is a croissant. And now yeah, it's giving me five different recipes that use croissants. Okay. That's great. All right. That gives, it's kind of gave me some detail too with the ingredients. Now, what you can do is if you go to get code, it's going to get the code for you and, you know, based on the image. So I don't actually have to go back in and see how I add the image to this, etc. right? Because there's actually a way to upload to Gemini that image, and then we can ask questions about it. All right. So let's go ahead and copy this. I'm going to create a new file. Let's call this croissant.py. Go ahead and paste this in. And now it's done is it created another function to upload to Gemini, right? So there is a function with, uh, with Google to upload this file and then they can use that file as part of the prompt. Okay. But everything else is kind of the same. So we had the same configuration. We had the same, uh, generative AI model. Now files here and uploaded to Gemini. So it's, it's part of this parts, which is a list of type part types, and it's going to take that first file, which I only have one and which is the croissant. And then that's when I asked that question. So what I want to do now, so again, this is the chat. This is actually the chat history. Now let's try and do this. We don't have a chat history and we just want to send a message by itself. So here I just started the chat. I didn't have to give any history or anything. I just started the chat. And then from that session, then I can send the message. So what I've done is I take that, I took that first part. Now I got files of zero, meaning the first file I've only uploaded one, but what this has done is taking that image and that's what it's going to say here. And again, I'm just gonna say, can you give me five different recipes for this food item? That's it. I don't want it to do anything else. Cause I don't want to know what it is without looking at that image. And then I'm just printing out the response. Let's go ahead and test this out. So Python croissant.py. Let's see what it says. So it should first upload that file. So it's uploading the file image croissant.jpg. Okay. So it's going to, it's going to here in that location. And now it should be giving us the five, five different recipes. And it is, and it does it in nice markdown format as well. Okay. Great. We've added an image file and we tested the image recognition. Now the next step is I want to add Google docs code so that I can upload the result of that to my Google docs so I can save it for later. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, there's a couple ways I could look at Google's API, figure that out, probably look on stack overflow or somewhere online to help me out. Or I can go to Google AI studio and just simply ask it to write this code for me. Can you give me code so I can upload a text file to Google Docs and then submit that and just see whatever code this gives me. Let's go ahead and try this out. And what we'll have to do after this is before you can just get anything related to Google working, you do have to get credential. Okay. So let's go ahead and copy this. Now I had already tested this out before, but let's go ahead and I want to walk you this through with you. I'm going to create a new file, upload to drive.py. Let's go ahead and paste that in. Okay. We'll, we'll come back to that and I'll fix some of those things because a lot of this down here, we don't need, it should have, yeah, should have just given me that, but it looks like it gave me everything. So let's go ahead and, and just remove that because we are going to come back to this. Okay. So this 
is generally what you're going to see. If you use a NoCode platform, what you don't see is that there are scopes to all of these things and you're just using OAuth, right? But here, what I'm going to do is we are going to use that, but we have to have credentials already. So let's go ahead and do that next. So what we've done is we added the Google Docs code to upload the drive. Now we need to get credentials. Now in this code, it did tell me how to do that, right? So you, you do have to go to Google console.cloud.google.com. We have to create a project if you don't have one. We have to enable the Google Drive API. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm in another email. Now what I'm gonna do that I'm here is yeah, you up here, you can choose a project. I'm just gonna choose, that's fine, Gmail API, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna then go to API and services. At the top here, you click enable API and services. You are going to search for drive, Google Drive API. You're gonna click that. If this is not enabled, click enable. And then once you've done that, now I could follow this code. It, it tells me what to do here, but we, I know that we have to go to credentials. So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna to go to credentials, create that, select desktop application, and then, um, and then download the JSON credentials file. So here, what that means is that we go to credentials on the left-hand side. Then either one of these, I already have a couple already made here from a little bit ago. Let's go ahead and actually, I guess we're gonna create another one. Create credentials, OAuth client ID, application type is desktop app. I believe that's what it said. Go to desktop application, give it, we're going to give it this name, then click create. Okay desktop app, give it that name, create. Okay, now what is done here, it, it already happened. So I'm gonna go ahead and click download JSON here, click okay. It gave me some, a huge client secret file. And then I'm gonna go back to the code. I'm gonna open up my drive or my finder, sorry. Hit it downloads. I'm going to put this over here. Now I kind of already have a credentials here. So let me rename that because I'm going to do this over again with you. And we need to rename this file, rename that to credentials.json. Okay. We are almost done. Now, if we go back here, then after that, we need to, you need to install these libraries. And by the way, in the school community, I want to have everything you see here in the video in my crew AI and any 10 masterclass courses. I have one on both and I help you solve your goals with AI agents and automation, save you time, money, etc. Okay, you can join now, link will be in the description below. Okay, now in the croissant PY file, I want to have a file name variable, which means that I'm going to write the response.txt to this file that will you see locally. You can actually see it right here. I want to print out that that was saved and then I'm gonna call that method that Google save that created for me. And then I'm going to give it that file with the document title name. Okay. Let's go ahead and run this now. Actually, I'm going to rename this because I already tested it out. Now let's go ahead and run this. So again, you can see, I would need to do this. I would need to add this code here again, but uploaded the same file. So the recipe saved to croissant recipe two over here. It successfully placed that to Google docs as croissant recipe. Now let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so I have two of these here. This is the latest one at 5.29 p.m. That is about the time right now. And here is the text file that we have locally saved into my Google Docs. Okay, so if we come back here and I check croissant underscore recipe two, the first one is the classic croissant sandwich. And the first one here is the classic croissant sandwich so that we know it worked properly. So we got our credentials and we have successfully tested this. Congratulations. We now have used a free AI model from Google that is wonderful. And we incorporated Google Docs code that was generated for us. We had to get our credentials and then we successfully uploaded the response of that through an Im image recognition to our Google Docs in our Google Drive. All right, great job. If you really haven't tried this out yet, uh, this was actually recommended to me from somebody in my school community to use that I even wasn't even aware of it. And you should be trying this now. I can't actually believe more people aren't talking about this. This is a free model that you can use right now.